Hey, hey, Father Michael here. Today, this morning, about an hour ago, I noticed two different signs that spring really is coming at last to the Arctic Circle where I live. First, I was awakened by that distinctive morning song of a robin just outside my bedroom window. That was the first thing. And I thought, oh, oh, that's awesome. But the second thing was I realized that the robin was singing because it was already getting light. That was the second signal that this seemingly endless winter uh, is on its way out. It's not that it hasn't been getting lighter every single day, but it's been so incremental that I really haven't noticed it until today. I was outside in the yard yesterday, a cool but sunny day, muddy day, kind of surveying the land uh, on the property that I just purchased a few months ago, which is a complete blank canvas for me. There really is nothing. Uh, a, a, a couple straggly bushes uh, in front and that's about it. So it's a blank canvas for me to to fill up with plantings and shrubs and perennials and a vegetable garden uh, or something in the back there. And I have on one corner of the property a giant ancient 60 foot behemoth of a tree. I don't know what kind it is. It has like the tiniest little leaves. It's a late, it's a late bloomer and uh, it's, it also drops its leaves early. So I have no idea what it is. I'm going to determine that uh, later when I get a better look at it. But I'm looking up at this giant tree and there are a few squirrel nests up there. Um, and because of its age and size, I can also see a lot of battle scars on this tree. I can see all kinds of bumps uh, and healing scars, uh, places where the branches have either been cut off, uh, probably because they were going to fall on someone's car, uh, but most of them, obviously, were not clean cuts at all. You know, they're just, they're what's left after a storm knocks off a big branch and the tree heals over. Well, this tree, like I said, is a behemoth. And the idea that I might have to have it taken down one day <laughs> is kind of daunting. The trunk must be at least four feet in diameter, probably a little bit more. So it's well over a hundred years old. But even so, the tree continues to grow beyond all of those injuries and scars and, uh, and surgeries, still trying to live its best, most healthy life. Well, there's a message in there for me. In Ephesians chapter 432, Paul writes, Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God has forgiven you in Christ. Well, that's all well and good. How do I get there? In the Ukrainian Byzantine Catholic world, today is the second full day of Great Lent. And for those of you in the Latin West, um, tomorrow is your day, Ash Wednesday. I don't know what it is about being raised Catholic, but this whole idea of giving up something for Lent is really rubbing me the wrong way. So I don't give things up for Lent, which I don't know, seems kind of childish to me. What I do try to do, I reframe that idea as surrendering something that is not worthy of my calling as a son of God. That puts it in a little 
better context, I think. And so for me, this year, I've got a couple little projects and I'm only gonna share this one with you, uh, interior projects. One of them, I am willing to engage in the process of forgiveness. Because to be clear, forgiveness is almost never one of those, you know, split decision things that we decide, oh, okay, I forgive. It's usually a process. It's not just about accepting uh, a situation that we don't want to accept. It's also letting go of the hurt and the resentment and moving forward despite the scars. Refusing to forgive is pointlessly trying to hold somebody else or often ourselves uh, captive to the hurts of the past. It doesn't work. Refusing to forgive really is, and I say this all the time uh, to clients, it really is pretending that the past can be different from what it is. That's what it is. And yet, even though I know that intellectually in my head, that does not necessarily mean that there's an automatic spiritual uh, and emotional connection uh, within myself to kind of harmonize that whole idea. I wish it were easier. And I still find myself falling into the rabbit hole of unforgiveness and trying to rent a permanent suite there on the top floor. It doesn't make sense. And so this great Lent, that's one of my projects, to work through some of the hurts that I am still carrying that are not serving my highest good, that are in fact probably preventing my evolution into the next best Michael that I can be. Just like that ancient gnarled tree in my yard, we all have wounds and scars. That's how this life goes. And some of those wounds, you know, okay, maybe we saw them coming. We could anticipate them. We could maybe prepare for them a little bit. But some of them, the most dramatic ones, the most impactful ones, probably hit us out of the blue. And we were nearly destroyed in the aftermath of those hurts. But we were not destroyed. And we do not have to allow the past to stunt us or undermine our growth today. It begins with a life of spiritual connection, prayer, meditation, whatever it is that makes you feel connected to your better self. And then by doing little acts of kindness and forgiveness, by offering all of our scars and all of our wounds, even the deepest and even the ugliest ones, to our gracious God. It's the only way I know to open the door for God to enter in and heal our woundedness, create some new growth and life within us, and to continue to guide us in our own personal evolution to be our better self. Today then, let's collectively take a breath. We've all been hurt. We've also been the ones who have hurt others. Let's choose to find forgiveness through prayer, through opening our minds and hearts, 
and to trust in God to help us do the next right thing, whatever that little thing is today. And as always, pray for peace in Ukraine. Pray with me. Loving, mighty, healing God, we come into your divine presence in this moment, grateful for all the times you have shown us the pathway to growth in the wake of disaster and tragedy and hurt. Thank you for helping us survive, for giving us a glimpse of how amazing this miracle of life really is. As we look into our own hearts today, help us to choose to move toward forgiveness. Forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of others, and help us to celebrate as best we can the fact that we have survived and that we will always survive and thrive under your care. Amen. And now may the God of continual growth be with you and with all those you love and with the people of Ukraine today the blessing of our mighty God, Otsa, Isino Isfiatomodoho.